Hello and welcome back to the Tether Radio Podcast, uh, the only thing keeping you from spinning out into the infinite abyss. My name is Daniel and I'm joined today, as always, by my brother and co-host, Joseph. Howdy, hey, hey, howdy, hi, hi, howdy. 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 <laughs> howdy there, brother. So, so well, well, hold up, though. Okay. So, all right, ready? Wait, 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 hold on. One, two, three. So... <laughs> Good God. That's terrible. Um, all right. So so we switched up our programming just a little bit. We're going to be recording on a slightly different day. Shouldn't really matter for the listeners because we'll have one pushed out and ready for consumption every seven days, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> that was me consuming a podcast. <laughs> I don't know that it was. I really don't know that it was. I, that was some... <laughs> <laughs> heavy consumption, bro. <laughs> um, all right, man. Well, um, I, I just want I just want to know where you are broadcasting from on this uh, beautiful. What is this seventh episode? <laughs> yeah, on the seventh episode. So I I am. Uh, there's a little bit of a personal housing shortage. <laughs> <laughs> Where you know the old the old apartamente in uh, in uh, Los Angeles is being subleased. Don't tell my landlord. And uh, and so anyway, I'm staying uh, with the in laws, and it's cool, man. I'm I'm learning a lot about myself and others, so it's awesome. It's awesome. Well, so what what the listeners out there don't know is right before this. Uh, Joseph and I FaceTimed for a split second just so that Joseph could show me that he is poolside <laughs> recording this podcast. Yeah, well, there's uh there's a, a little spot in Southern California that has some interesting mid-century modern architecture uh and uh the in-laws live in a spot like that and so it's very it's very it's very uh key party you know, if you can imagine <laughs> some serious effing key parties went down in the 60s and 70s, that is this joint. But it's but it's cool. It's awesome. We're here. Um, imagine imagine Joseph is on the set of Boogie Nights. It's kind of <laughs> it kind of looks like that, you know. But um, anyway, anyway, we'll so, move on. <laughs> so yeah. So um, but anyway, so this is this is episode seven. Um, hop in there, listen to our shit, let us know what you think, would love your feedback on any of our episodes. Constructive Tether. criticism is always, always appreciated. Constructive criticism, or shit, it's 2018. Critical feedback, Just bitches. shit talk us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> critical, crit, critical feedback, you know, for sure. For yeah. sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, and if you don't feel like texting it, write it on a whiteboard, snap a pic, and, you know, send it anonymously. Anonymously, tether, t e t h e r, radio, r a d i o at gmail dot com, tether radio at gmail dot com. All right. All right, my brother, kick us off here. All right, man. So uh, this first thing, I <clears throat> wanted to just uh, brush upon it really quickly. Um, so I, I actually didn't even realize that this was going on until I saw the article that I'm about to uh, be speaking. You say br- you said brush upon it? Uh, did I? I don't know. Like a sweet glaze on a pork chop. There Let's you go. Do Let's do it. <laughs> so basically what, what has happened is uh, there's an article from the Huffington Post that um, they were covering that the, the FDA is all up in arms about uh, not basically reclassifying all of these, uh, in quotation, milk products out there that it's like the soy milks, the, the almond milks, the uh, rice, you know, milks and all, all that jazz. Is it really milk? Well, or, or should it be classified as milk kind of thing? Because the FDA actually, you know, defines it as like it has to come from a, a, like an animal, basically. Um, mm-hmm. So... Basically, to do a deep dive for us, uh, I pulled an article from The Onion, and man, they really get to the bottom of it. So, <laughs> all right. So, all right. Yeah. So break, break us, break us off on this Onion article. All right. So basically, the, the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration, uh, issued a statement recently 
and they are defending the decision to reclassify alternative milks as nut sweat. Mm. So, mm. which is, mm. I mean, dude, I don't mm. know about mm. you, but it's just like, if that doesn't whet your appetite, I don't know what will. So the, the, uh, and I just want to read a couple of quotes from, um, the FDA commissioner. Uh, he, he basically said, uh, while we hope this new labeling helps clarify shopping choices, it's important to note Americans are still free to enjoy nut sweat over their cereal in the morning. Or drink mm. a refreshing glass of nut sweat as a snack. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, dude, this this is just. Uh, I think this is a really good decision. I think that uh, I think it's really going to be easy to market that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and just to just to uh, quickly move move on from this, read one more quote from the the commissioner. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with making yourself a protein shake chock full of nut sweat or letting your children consume a cup of, or two of nut sweat during the day. In fact, going forward, I'm sure we'll be seeing quite a few nut sweat mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, that's the onion. That's, that's the onion, which it, for those, for those that are, that are uninitiated. Yeah. It's fake news. It's, the onion's it's, fake news. It's the epitome of fake news. So, um, but, uh, okay, but but so I know I know that this is like this is the the uh, the uh, you know the kickoff article here. But you know if we use milk, if we use you know the verb milk is a verb, right? To exploit or defraud, we might still be able to keep it. Dude, attached. milk is a noun. It's milk is a noun, but you can use it as a verb, right? Oh, I milk, oh, milk, I milk like I milk I'm, a cow. Okay. I milk, yeah, or 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 milking somebody, right? <laughs> I want to see somebody milking nuts. <laughs> yeah, well, so that's that's the thing. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, nobody Google that. <laughs> nobody Google oh, that because I. <laughs> Dude, actually, I'm sorry, I, but hashtag that's my fetish. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, dude. Okay, here's the thing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you know, Daniel. If you know what would happen if you googled that, no. it, it is it is absolutely a category of porn. Nut sweater. Oh uh, no, no, milking. No. <laughs> Milking. Oh, milking! Ew. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah. But it doesn't have anything to do with the milk. You know what? We're getting way <laughs> off topic here. It is. It is. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah, getting yeah, hot yeah. in here. I'm having to fan myself. Jesus, <laughs> man. Me too, man. Me too. Oh, shit. But, uh, yeah. So I mean, the point is that they want. They want to. They being the the uh, the FDA wants accurate labeling. Mm. Right. Um, and so I don't know. It seems a little it seems a little silly, but I guess if you I mean, it makes sense, though, honestly, makes sense. you know, yeah, it but... makes sense. It makes sense because it, uh, it is mildly misleading to call stuff like obviously almond milk, rice milk, all that jazz. So because, um, I mean, you know, I mean, really. But, you know, I, I feel like people is, know so. it would be a problem if if. Almond milk, or you know, any of these other, uh, any of these other milky white substances that are being squeezed out of nuts. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we anyway, we, we better, better pull the rip cord on this yeah, bad boy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm jamming the e-break. But it would be a problem if they, if these things were trying to like achieve some sort of market entry. But everybody here knows about it, so just drop milk. Just call it almond on the side of the jug, like yeah. everybody will know what it is. Well, and and I think I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, and uh, you know, obviously we'll, we'll move forward. But um, I I think the main thing is it's like for for people out there, and I know that I mean, there's a reason that it says uh, do not eat on the side of paint cans. There are people out there that will take that as completely. Uh, something that can take the place of cow milk and the, it's going to have all of the same nutrients. People, right. people will assume that. And I'm assuming that's what they're, they're getting at that it's like, okay, well, we need to have some kind of, uh, a different category kind of thing so that people know it's, you know, I, I, I'm sure that they, it's fortified with all sorts of nutrients and stuff, but it's like, it's also one of those things that it's not interchangeable. So. 
Yeah, but um, yep, yep. anyway, so uh, moving on from that, man. Um, so I pulled this other article from uh, the RT uh, RT News, and the, the article title was Time Magazine's creepy Putin Trump cover is what media subversion really looks like. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I pulled this because I thought that it was um, interesting on a couple different levels. Because as of right now, wait, what can can you describe? Oh yeah, I'm describe sorry. this. So so we'll we'll post this in notes. We've got this this link that we'll we'll post up in notes. But just kind of break down break down ex- precisely what you're talking about here. Yes. What, what so, the deal is. So well, first of all, in regards to the the actual cover. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people have seen uh, stuff like, uh, for instance, with the Snapchat app, um, you can do face swaps and stuff. And it'll right. it'll basically take, you know, whatever, the eyes, or it'll take the, uh, oops, sorry, give me one second. Um, then uh, it'll take the eyes, it'll take the, you know, the mouth or whatever, d- different aspects of the face and um, interchange them with uh, another right. person. Well, right. they, they've basically done a little bit, something like that, but they definitely shopped it a little bit to make it look more realistic kind of thing. Right. And uh, and then they also went on, and they being time, um, went on to post something to Twitter that it's like a, um, I don't know if you're familiar, are, are you familiar with boomerang videos? Um. Yes, it's it kind goes, of like a. It's yeah, like a. Yeah. It's like a gif that goes in both directions. Yeah. It, well, it goes and then it goes back in reverse, kind of thing. It plays it re- forward it, and then it right and then it rewinds. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. so they actually uh, posted this uh, actual video on their Twitter that it is like the transformation of it starts with Trump's face and then slowly uh, evolves into Putin's face, kind of thing. Right. Um. But anyway, so. The reason that I, I found this uh, very interesting is because nowhere, nowhere in the the actual like time time has not written an article that has any evidence that uh, and to my knowledge and correct me if I'm wrong if you know um, zero evidence has come up or or uh, been shown that there has been uh, whatever collusion uh with Mm -hmm. uh between donald trump and vladimir putin Mm -hmm. yet time magazine takes it upon themselves to imply i guess that that stuff is going on kind of thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's it's Mm -hmm. one of these things that they're they're not going to explicitly say that because uh, there's zero credibility to it to, to saying that, you know, I mean, like people, people can believe that. Well, you do, you say, you say Sorry. zero credibility. You, you're saying that there's zero evidence, like, or, or excuse me, I, I don't like to say that. There, uh, there is yeah. no public evidence. Yeah, and and now. I think that's what, yeah, Ex- that, as as far as I know. I so, don't, so I, yeah. or or said another way, whoever mm. who is invest, whoever is investigating this, whether for strategic reasons or simply because it doesn't exist, hasn't released uh information that shows that there's collusion yes. which means that this shit is speculative until proven otherwise got it yeah yeah so i'm, I'm just i'm just getting granular with this because it's like i've got sure. a, I, have, I have a slight rebuttal but go ahead yeah well so it, it was just it was very interesting to me that it, it, it was one of these situations that i mean time time magazine is an extremely credible source i would think mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. And man, this really shakes, in my opinion, the the foundation of like their agenda kind of thing. And I'm gonna refer to mm. it as an agenda because I don't know why else you would do, you know, you would publish something something like that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, other than if you were trying to, I don't know, it had had some kind of motive kind of thing. So, right, right. Um, but anyway, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, man. I mean. <laughs> So, so first of all, um, I really want to encourage you and anybody else that's listening, uh, to this to pick up a book called Black Ops Marketing, or mm-hmm. it's called, excuse me, Black Ops Advertising, mm-hmm. you know? 
Um, and I will actually pull this over right now into uh, into our list of links so that we can we can send this out, right? Okay. But this is why this is this is why this is really interesting. So basically, Black Ops advertising, what they get into is just how deep um, advertising and marketing goes. And I'm, and I'm going to I'm going to tie this around quickly because I know it sounds sounds like a non sequitur, but it's actually completely attached. Right. Okay. Completely yeah. connected. Um, how deep advertising and marketing uh, is embedded in journal and you know, quote, journalism today, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And so while it may be, um, it may be, I, I guess, like a, a much, a, an entirely too facile statement to like shout fake news or whatever. Yeah. What's crazy is that if you really dig into the way that, that uh, these institutions are run, they're fucked, man. I mean, like journalism as we know it, where companies could, uh, I well, I guess, yeah, companies. I mean, they are companies, but yeah. organizations could keep some sort of journalist, you know, journalistic integrity because they were self-sufficient. That's not real anymore. It does not exist, period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so what's interesting about about black ops advertising and why I would suggest that everybody reads it is it gets into like the amount of budget, for example, um, or, or excuse me, the amount of uh, revenue, for example, that The New York Times actually makes from these deeply embedded um, uh, op-eds, right? Where it's it's somebody from, for example, the U.S. Army that's mm-hmm. writing that's writing an op-ed that is that speaks favorably about you know uh, whatever like hege- you know the U.S. like uh, U.S. Uh, uh, military activity overseas or whatever. That's just an example, and it's not it's not exactly clear. You know who's writing this or how they're positioned or whatever, but it's like on the back end, people are paying for the exposure. Okay, mm-hmm. so hard hard stop. Black ops advertising. Um, we'll we'll put we'll post a link. You guys have got to check it out. It's a very interesting book. Okay. So to get back to the to get back to your to your cover. First uh, of all, go ahead. Oh no no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I I didn't realize you were going to keep going. So roll roll on, friend. <laughs> Let me just take a breath. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I was, I was that first uh, that first little tirade was 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 uh, long. But anyway, um, the thing that's been interesting to me about Time uh, in particular this year, um, Time has had a series of uh, of covers that have been kind of interesting. Like I like the fact, um, you know, there are certain things that that Trump does that are uh, interesting to me. Some are kind of foul. Some are, you know, I, this is just like, an, uh, like a, you know, I don't think it's fair just to for people just to be like, oh, this person's disgusting. Like this is an insanely interesting time in in American politics. Like, I, and I mean, I think that that's like at like 100. percent We have good or bad. This is one of the most dynamic times in American politics that certainly people like you and I are kind of in that millennial generation have seen ever. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy, right? Um, but it's interesting because Time uh, had an article – or excuse me, had a cover maybe a month or two ago with the crying kid. Did you, did you remember this? Oh, yeah. There's like a crying, no, crying child. No, the, Hondur- the kid from Honduras or whatever, right? Right. That and supposedly story, separated from their family and stuff. And the story so. emerged afterwards that it wasn't the case at all, right? Yeah. This, was, this, was, this was not somebody who's uh, – a child who's separated from her mother. Her mother, um, you know, was, uh, you know, uh, entering through, entering the United States through a, a, a uh, uh, not through a checkpoint, was arrested for entering illegal, illegally, mm-hmm. and went through this process and whatever, and the kid was never separated from her mom, whatever. So, just, it's, it's, my point is, let me, I'll wrap all this up. My point is, is that, you know, these organizations, organizations like, uh, Time, Wall Street Journal, um, Los Angeles Times, uh, you know, New York Times, uh, WAPO, whatever, right? Yeah. They absolutely have agendas. They are going to feed those agendas. They're going to feed the, 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 the agendas of the pocketbooks that fund them. And I think that, um, we, uh, we have entered a, a time in 
um, in American politics and, um, and, and, uh, journalism that in some ways, bizarrely is kind of a, like a throwback, you yeah. know what I mean? Where it's like, it's just like, it's fucking propaganda. I mean, yeah. it just is. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's propaganda to, uh, on both sides. Oh, Absolutely. no. And, and Absolutely. that's, that's the thing real quick, dude, the only thing that I would, uh, urge all listeners question us and by us i mean joseph and i uh question your you know any news that you see any news that you read question it man try to get the whole story don't don't just take it for face value because like you just said man these are businesses they have motives so that's and and if you read it, it, it i mean all of us do not have time to sit around and read all day yeah. got it like you've got things you have to do for mm-hmm. sure. But if there's a topic that's important to you, and I think we, we touched on this uh, a week or so ago, engage in, 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 in a long form, uh, kind of thought process. Like even if, lo- you know, we're talking about long form media and, and how valuable, you know, it really is to, to, to see sources and whatever. And we're all not investigative journalists. We all don't have this time. We got. You know, yeah, yeah. we got shit we got to do. But, you know, if there's a topic that's important, man, I mean, go to Google, set filters and read no less than four or five articles. on yeah. it. I mean, and, if there is something that you really give a shit about and you want to <laughs> think deeply about, like whatever your favorite, like you can't have in 2018, you cannot have a favorite source because nah. it's not real. No, you're and right. You're right. These are they're so skewed. And so it's like, <clears throat> man, I'm telling you, I love to get my news. As a matter of fact, it's funny that you that you were talking about this because I didn't even think about it this morning. I picked up that Time magazine. I was reading through it. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though I'm with you, I, it's just it's it's sensationalism. It's 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 many things. Right? Yeah. Where, yeah. You know, where they're they're trying to sell magazines and keep. You know, basically Time Magazine is trying to do – like Time Magazine is winning. Time Magazine is trying to do exactly what we're doing. We're kind of feeding this whole thing yeah. um, and saying, have you seen the Time Magazine cover? And that's the purpose, right? Yeah, true, um, true. But that, that, that being said, you know, just digging in and really kind of looking at, at as many angles as you possibly can within reason I think is, uh, is just a re- really good habit to get into. Particularly in politics, man, because yeah. I mean this this stuff. Well, dude, it, politics it is, are a damn it, business, it, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it it is, but I'm just ho- I'm hoping I'm hoping that that you know I made the comment earlier that we're in such a dynamic period, and I'm hoping that that dynamicism really spills over to uh to you know uh to local political arenas. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know this this chick was just elected in New York. Drawn a total blank on her, on her last name right now, um, but uh, but she was uh, recently elected. Upset, you know this this like old white dude who had been in office for thirty years or whatever. This this is a, a, a younger um, Latina woman, and I think she's like twenty eight. Drawn a total blank. I, I, no, on her her, uh, her um, I know her initials are AOC. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember. I'm looking anyways, it up, but keep keep rolling. Yeah, yeah, and so and so. Um, anyway, my point is, is like she, you know, she's preaching preaching the socialist agenda, and now the right is like, you know, or not even the right, like centrists, kind of on both parties are like, what? And then Bernie Sanders is hopping into the mix, and and honestly, I don't think this stuff is bad. Like, if people want to, if they want to, you know, come together under a socialist agenda, go ahead. That's not my flavor of politic, but nevertheless, like that's what makes this country badass right yeah. is that you can have oh, all alexandria ocasio cortez ocasio cortez yeah ocasio cortez yeah that's it and so um and she's just a, like a dynamic person so my point is is that you know i really appreciated this this uh this note on the uh on the punch list today because uh i think we have got to continue to point out People like you and me and you, you know, your, your, your friends that you, you know, you chat with at work, your friends that, you know, when you're going on your run on Saturday morning, we have got to continue to press each other to like really think a little bit deeper about this stuff. And I think that, um, you're 100% correct. Somebody who just like 
looks at the Time Magazine article and was like, yeah, fuck yeah, man, collusion, you know, like, and yeah. doesn't question anything yeah. about it. That's really dangerous. Well, uh, dude, we be talk- a critical thinker, don't be a lemming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or a and sheeple. It, and, well, and it's, and it's, you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, bell curve is real. So, like, you know, there are percentages of people that just don't, they're, they're, you know, everything that, that we just said, they're, you know, they don't give a shit. They're, they're, you know, they've read time since 1970 and that's, that's the truth for them or whatever. But I mean, it's just, we've got to, got to really, really encourage, you know, each other to think a little bit deeper about the stuff and pull from multiple sources because it's like, for sure. agen- agendas are really hard to, to, you know, uh, kind of, uh, pull away from, you know, the reality of, of a situation. I'm telling you, read Black Ops advertising. Yeah. It is fucking crazy. Yeah. Crazy how, how embedded this stuff is. But anyway. Huh. Um, well, so, um, I mean, I think that that's, uh, that's probably a pretty good wrap on, uh, on the Time Magazine thing, right? So, I think um, so. it was just, it, it was just very, um, it was just, uh, I, I don't know. It, it was very interesting that, it, you know, that RT News was uh, had this article that it's just like basically stating what we're stating to to a degree that it's just like, man, you know, there's there's really no foundation for this. If you re- if you want to see the spin that media puts on on stuff, this is a, a perfect example kind of thing. It it so. it is it is. But I I I think that hopefully. Hopefully, mm-hmm. you know, we are getting into a period where, you know, I, whatever. I don't want to say reaching across the aisle. That's bullshit. Like yeah. there are there are teams and those teams want to win. Like yeah. that's it. Right. Yeah. But but at the same time, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you want to play the Star Spangled Banner in the back, <laughs> you know, in the background for this one. But at the same time, like that's that's the thing that's really fantastic <laughs> about <laughs> About the United States is that, uh, is that, (laughs) you know, you can hop, well, you can hop in a car, you can drive for thousands of miles, you know, because you have a driver's license in one state that has reciprocity in all these other states, right? And so, and so, you know, the nature of this country, man, is to like really, really, really press hard for ideas. Um, and, you know, I think that, uh, I think it's a good thing. And honestly, man, I just hope that we continue to see, you know, much, much deeper um, kind of thought around these topics. And frankly, even though I think the Time Magazine article is 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 Ill, you know misleading or 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 ill informed or or you know uh, obviously you know pursuing like hardcore par- partisan politics, mm-hmm. like fuck it, fuck it, that's where we are right now. So yeah. anyway, gotcha. anyway, pr- pretty interesting. Um, okay, so I let's take a let's take a, a hard <laughs> a hard left turn here. Um, babies, T H E Y B E S. You want to guess what this is? Do you know? Uh, I do not know, man. Please enlighten me. Okay. All right. <laughs> it sounds so, interesting. <laughs> so, right, right. So, so, um, so the pronouns, they, their, you know, like gender, like unassigned gender. Or, Pronouns, yeah, there, there is a long, 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 long list of pronouns as we have kind of uh, stepped into this, you know, gender bending kind of, uh, you know, gender fluidity um, or, gen- you know, this 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 uh, this period of time where these the, like what what have traditionally been considered the two genders are being questioned. OK, by popular media and whatever. That's fine. Um, but, uh, but, uh, this was a really interesting article because, um, basically what the article is saying, uh, and it uses an example of a family in Salt Lake City, I believe, but, um, but basically what it's saying is that children, um, there are people that suggest that their children should be able to, to, you know, choose their own, uh, gender identity, right? Obviously they're not choosing their gender, but choosing the way that they connect to their gender, right? Uh-huh. Whatever that, whatever, what, whatever, whatever the, that means, right? <laughs> um, and so, and so this article details this example of, uh, and we'll post the article, but this, this family 
in uh in Salt Lake City and they they named their um you know this the lady that had has this kid uh, Kyle Myers I think is her name um she was a gender studies student at the University of Utah and she says that she realizes that gender was a social construct and so um she wanted to um she wanted to allow her kid who this kid's name is Zoomer um, to uh, to decide what gender, you know, to, to decide the way that the kid related to her gender. And so or related to their gender, yeah, too, I guess. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> and so um, and so uh, they, do, they and by the way, just for all the listeners, they have a picture of Zoomer and Zoomer is a, a really cute baby. <laughs> Yeah, Zoomer, Zoomer's a cute kid, man. Zoomer's a totally cute kid. I'm, I'm, my money is on that Zoomer is definitely a dude. Um, 100%. I don't see, not in that picture. Go down a little bit. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was Zoom- going to say, oh yeah, I got you. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, and that's fine. And that's fine if Zoomer's not a boy who, who gives a shit. But, uh, but it's just interesting because they go into detail here and this chick is like, Talking about how, um, talking about how she has like protected the grand or has kept the grandparents from seeing Zoomer's genitals so that they don't treat Zoomer in, in, you know, in any way that is like, you know, that caters to one sex over the other. Um, and so it's just, are you hearing this thunder? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. it's it, the the skies are opening up in Knoxville. So. <laughs> but anyway, like sorry. Go ahead. I like it. I like it. Um, and so, whatever. I mean, that's those are like the facts of the case, uh-huh. right? Um, they're referring to this kid as they. Okay, that's fine. You know, they they. Um, there's this quote here that so many of the root causes of health outcomes are related to gender, not sex. Referring to people who ask if a child. You know, if a child is a boy or a girl, she just kind of really kind of hits this whole, you know, whole, um, uh, you know, point again and again and again and again that they're trying to, like, keep this kid, you know, um, uh, away from from having a gender identity forced on them. Mm-hmm. OK. Um, so I think. I, this is really interesting to me because if you look at the at this picture of this family, they actually look like a lovely family. Frankly, they look like people that, that I hang, would hang out with. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, they look they look cool. They're hipsters. They're doing their thing. Like I'm sure he smokes a fucking pipe, and you know what I mean. She yeah. she like you know does like you know knit bombing or whatever the fuck, and like they <laughs> and, you know they 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 drink uh, bulletproof coffee and the whole fucking nine yards. Great. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's really, really, really fucked up to like press this insanely complicated um, situation on your kid. Yeah. And like, and, and I guess my thing is like, um, I understand like, like if you zoom, pardon the pun, way <laughs> out, the goal here is to raise like a happy, healthy kid, yeah. right? Um, and to, I would think. I, I don't I don't want to speak for them, but but I would think that the goal is to to raise a child who is like a healthy contributing member of society, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've got a kid. I don't want to speak for you, but you've got a kid. Like, if your kid gets older and all of a sudden comes out of the closet, like mm. I, I highly doubt you'll give a shit. Maybe you will, but no, I don't no, know. you're you're so. But that's, in my opinion, where, like you said, you're you're forcing this uh, this extremely complicated matter on someone that is trying to figure out how to walk. Yeah, and it's just it's just you know? it's very it's very conf- I would think. It's very confusing. And by the way, sorry for using your kid as an example. But my point no, is, no, I mean, is, that, is that there are people in this world that were like, if my kid's gay, like I'd have a huge problem with that. It's like, dude, we've moved 
pretty far beyond that, I think. Yeah. You know, oh, I mean, it's, it's our generation, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, and you just want your kid to be happy, and happy, healthy. Yeah. You know, your yeah. kid is my nephew. Like, I just want you. I don't. I don't give a shit what your kid decides. You know, ultimately yeah. decides to do in terms of like the gender that they associate with and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think that like taking this insanely complicated concept and like forcing it on your kid. And I absolutely I want to use the word forcing it on your kid because they go to kindergarten and, you know, they go to preschool or whatever. And it's like society, you know, has a, is is at a place where it's like, I mean, this is a lady. She dresses like a female, like a lady. Right. Mm -hmm. She has a husband. And in this picture, he's a very masculine dude and he's dressed like a masculine dude. And then it's like. You're telling your kid, like, you're neither, don't pick. Like, I just don't understand. I, I just, I get, uh, I get the, the, the kind of genesis of the idea. I actually yeah. really get the genesis of the idea, which is like, I just want my kid to be happy. Yeah. But what I, but what I don't understand is like the, the, uh, I don't know, the way that, that, that these people have kind of, rolled it out and apparently this article was picked up because apparently I'm not going to say this is a common thing but it's like it is something that parents are doing uh more often and so it's just it's again like in the in the and I'll I'll shut up after this and kind of give you give you an opportunity to respond here but you know they've got this sticker like first of all it looks like they may be living a lot of their life on uh, on Instagram and hmm. uh and they've got this sticker on their kid's back, and it's like, hello. They're like at a picnic or something. It says, hello, my name is Zoomer. They slash them. And then um, and then it says, we'll write they, them until Zooms tells us their pronouns. Hashtag they be. I mean, like what? I just don't – I don't understand how you go from calling a kid they, them, which by the way is just a word to this yeah. kid, right? Yeah. That yeah. could be yeah, that could be associated with anything. They're not going to understand the complexity of what you're trying to pull off, right? Yeah. And so it just seems like allowing your kid to, you know, they want to play with My Little Ponies, play with My Little Ponies. You want to play with, you know, Barbies and your boy, play with Barbies. You know, you if you're a girl and you want to play with, you know, in the mud and with Tonka trucks, who gives a shit? Go play in the mud with Tonka trucks and hang out with all the boys. And you want your hair cut short? Sure, let's cut your hair short. You want to wear jeans? You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. that's kind of I I feel well, like it's almost is. like a, an oxymoronic thing. That yeah, it's so like go, so go, what do you think, dude? You got you well, have a kid? I don't have a kid. Yeah. Right? So well, what it seems like to me is that it, it's it's one of these scenarios of people wanting to be so progressive that their actions almost go against what they're trying to do, if uh -huh. that makes any sense, you know, or what they're trying to portray or whatever. I, yeah, dig down just a little bit, a so, little bit on that. Yeah. So. Okay, by by putting this, by telling your child, I guess, not to choose until they're ready kind of thing, I feel like you're going against allowing them to make a choice. <laughs> Does that uh, make any sense? Say that one more time. So it's like you're, you're telling this child, oh, you're, you're, uh, you're not a boy or a girl until you choose to be a boy or a girl kind of thing it's like right. you you don't think that at some point it's come up and zoomer w has been like I, I i can't even imagine the question like the questions that would come out of this kid's mouth like you, you know what i'm saying that it's yeah like, yeah how, how do you keep how do you keep such an open mind in in such a formative uh part uh or, or part of someone's life because it's like, dude, that's that's when the foundation is being set, kind of thing, right? You know, in in childhood development. So it's like, if they're not developing in a certain direction, then it's kind of like, so they're in a stalemate until they get old enough to understand this, or you know? Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of how it strikes me. Now, what I would be really interested. I mean, the point of this podcast is to uh discover articles like this 
bring them up in a in a way and 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 kind of start to socialize the ideas in these mm-hmm. articles and like the, the and 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 ideas that are kind of floating around um <laughs> the you know uh, like uh, like popular discourse right mm-hmm. um and and kind of me- bring them down to earth start to chat them out as you know you'd chat about these things over beers um and then really kind of uh you know just ju- again just push push more ideas out with more velocity like that's yeah. kind of right? well the more the more and, you talk about it the more well formed of an idea comes about in a- my abs- opinion so. absolutely absolutely and just side note we've gotten to a point now where everybody's like expected to have an opinion formed before they chat with people and that's exactly bullshit, right yeah. yeah um we need to f- be able to talk things out to uh to actually form an opinion so to that extent I'd love to, and I might try to find something and post, see if I can post uh, something on our, our show notes. But I'd love to find, and this this just occurred to me, but I uh, would love to find um, a video or an article of a uh, a psychiatrist kind of breaking this down, um, or or not e- not even a psychiatrist, like a child development. You know, uh, like specialist or specialist, whatever. Yeah, you know? exa- exactly. Because I tend to think there's got to be a way to achieve the same goal of having your kid feel free and confident and, um, you know, and, and be able to kind of pursue the person, the, to, 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 to pursue the person that they want to be without just force fitting like modern fuckery on them from yeah. the from the age of like six months like i just don't i mean it's hard for me to wrap my mind you know as an adult around these these multi-layered um conversations and mm-hmm. again personal freedom absolutely you want to be called they them whatever you want to request that people refer to you as you know uh you know moon unit Thank you. Thank you, Frank Zappa. That's fine. Like, whatever. You know, I mean, that's and I'll call you Moon Unit if that's what you want to be called. You know what I mean? That's no problem. But but insofar as having uh, your kid be like, I just think you're you're introducing complexity that your kid cannot possibly understand at this age. Yeah. And, And I don't think that your goal, the thing that you that these people are trying to achieve I don't know that that's really necessarily the way to go about it because I think it's just going to be generally confusing for this kid. Yeah. <laughs> you know? well, um, well, and and that's – in my opinion, I'm, I feel like I would be more – or I will fall in the parenting realm of, like you said – well, coming from a especially a scientific background kind of thing, I believe in two genders, you know, kind of thing. Sure. But sure. – I don't believe in, uh, I mean, hell, dude, case in point, who normally stays home with the kid, uh, you know, when, when people, uh, just, it, it, and this is the stereotypical person that stays home with the kid when a couple has uh, a baby. Who normally does? The man. <laughs> no. Kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I know so, what you're stereotypically, say. the woman. Well, sure. you know what? You're talking. To one person, that our our house doesn't fall under that category. I stay home with the kid. You know? Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I gotta so, go. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, right. What, what, what you, the, what hey, the dude, fuck you is just this? shook How did me, I, brother. Wait, yeah, well, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold on. Wait, who's the damn, who wears on? the damn who? <laughs> yeah, who wears the damn pants in that family? <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm totally kidding. But, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. But you go know ahead. what I'm saying? That it's Absolutely. like, it, dude. Those those are literally uh, ideas that that's the, that's the reason that stereotypes exist. It's just because a, a, most of the time, the majority falls under it. That's right. that's kind of right. the concept behind a stereotype. But yeah, it doesn't yeah. mean that that's how it has to be. No, like that's, you said, it's like that, that's exactly right. I, I mean, mean if, dude, if, as a kid, I played with Barbies with our cousin. You know, a, a, absolutely, dude. So and, it's like and, dude, and wore dresses. I mean, yeah. this is not. This is not like these are kids exploring the yeah, space. Yeah, just playing, having fun, well, and being a kid. And and dude, exploring the space. Like I talk to friends of mine that are gay, right? Mm. And they say, from a very young age, they felt gay. They felt yeah. like they liked 
the same sex. Yeah. Yeah. Who I mean, and honestly, it it is and 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 you know, like homosexuality has been around since like the dawn of man. Yeah. Most people would agree most sex and I absolutely do believe this from a genetics perspective. It mm-hmm. is binary. You are one or the other. Mm-hmm. Now, the the psycholo- the psychology that's like overlaid on your physical form. I mean, this is getting a little bit absurd here, but that I, psychology, I got you. that psychology that's like overlaid on your physical form, like it's complicated. The human mind is an amazing thing, but it is like this, you know, infinite space of of infinite possibility. And so, like, look, man, if you are a seven foot tall dude and you want to wear dresses and but on you know some days but also you know whatever be gender fluid or whatever i really hope that we're getting to a point where nobody gives a shit i don't really care like that's fine you should be able to do whatever you want to do you know as long in so long as it's not hurting or affecting some you know somebody else but but forcing that shit forcing that decision to me that's this is a this is a stretch but just to just to make a point mm-hmm. to me it's like it's like it's like asking a kid to think about god or religion mm-hmm. like it's just you don't have the capacity yeah to be able to like understand you know uh, uh any any bit of that right I mean, and like, like the, and the and the and the repercussions and so yeah. i think that it, i just think that it's like I wish the world – I understand what they're going for, wish the world was there where it's just like you can – this kid can can do whatever. I just think you're going to put your your kid in a situation that is going to be uh, detrimental to their development by forcing your view on them that, you know, they – that they need to – you know, I mean I think you can let them choose their gender identity without making – uh, without holding up a sign that's like with a big fucking red arrow pointing at your kid saying this one right here choosing gender identity you know what I yeah. mean like, well and that that's which this is a complete well not it, it's a related topic but like people using kids on like social media absolutely oh, drives oh, me dude. up the fucking wall man I just like that that. Like we all get, I mean, in that picture, dude, it's like we all get, we absolutely all get how unique you are. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Come on, lady. Like, yeah. It's fuck? it's it's just I I don't know. I mean, I Megan and I uh, normally don't post anything. Well, we post like a ca- occasional stuff to like keep friends and family up to date and stuff. But it's like this kind of stuff, like. Trying to use your child for a social, political, religious, whatever agenda, man, that's that's some that's some low down dirty shit. Yeah, but opinion. I get it. I I, I understand <laughs> but, why people I understand why people do it. It's like the same reason that like you know whatever your dad want, really wants you to play baseball or you know your mom really wants you to take you know cooking classes because she loves cooking or whatever. I get it. Um, but I, you know, I, here's, here, we'll wrap this cause we've, we've been on this one for a while, but the thing that I love about this is that, is that, um, while I don't necessarily agree, I'm, th- I'm thinking about something I've never thought about before. Yeah. You, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and yeah. so it's like, I, I have a, a, a good, well, you and I have, uh, He's a good buddy of mine, but you you know this guy and you know, but Paul. Yeah. Um, and he this guy, you know, look, he's like, you know, there's there are two two kind of hard and fast rules with with uh with people that think deeply about things, right? They reserve the right to change their mind based on new facts or new new uh new evidence mm-hmm. and they argue. That's yeah. it. And they argue with each other because that's that's how you get to the bottom of something. That's how you get to 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 the root file, if you will. Yeah. So, anyway, okay. We'll, Wait, we'll, real quick, real quick before we move on, I I happened to stumble down into the comments and uh, I just want to read one of them. <laughs> it says, oh God. "It's not by Ken M, is it?" No, 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 no. It's really you, short. You know what I'm talking about? The Ken M stuff. Oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't okay. think it's... Okay, all right, but, all right, uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, it says, Well, I have long wanted to identify as a steam locomotive, particularly a 462 Pacific, confused in Lancashire. 
I mean, dude, dude yeah. I'm Man, sorry. It's, I just isn't that it was amazing? Funny. It's it's it, it, the comment section is is literally just like a a uh, it's literally like a primordial like little cesspool. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like every drain <laughs> down there, and like you know, if you sift hard enough. Most of it's just turds and paper, right? But yeah. like. If you sift hard enough, you might find a gold nugget. <laughs> yeah, right there. Um, anyway, so wh- where are we uh, where are we heading from the Davies brother? So we're gonna head uh, into a qu- a quick one um, on the Peter principle. Cool. Um, and so for those, we're just gonna touch on this really quickly. Have you ever been at your job and um, whatever your job is, and you are kind of you know, doing your thing and you think, man, like my boss is a moron. Like my boss is, is incompetent. Right. Um, well there actually, (laughs) there might be, this might be a fact that your boss (laughs) is, is measurably incompetent. So we we will, we will post this as well, but there was a, uh, the Peter principle is an idea in, um, in, uh, in like management sciences, right? And so management sciences just likes to look at the, the dynamics of hierarchy and of management structures uh, in businesses and in, and in uh, just entities in general. Um, and there's a guy named Lawrence J. Peter who wrote a book in 1969 called The Peter Principle. Um, and so in a nutshell, um, The Peter Principle basically states – um, that, and I'll quote here, that people in a hierarchy tend to rise to their level of incompetence. In other words, an employee is promoted based on their success in previous jobs until they reach a level at which they are no longer competent. As, pardon me, as skills in one job do not necessarily translate to another. So, so it, it is, it is like this, this, this kind of, uh, you know, this guy's seeking to quantify um, how people plateau, right, yeah, in, yeah. In, in, a, in a career. Um, and so I think we've probably all maybe been exposed to this. I don't know. Do you have you have anything that comes to <laughs> comes to mind in the Peter Principle? What do you what do you think? Do you think this is? This I mean, is, dude, I think this is. It's it's so interesting that you talk to. I say you. Everybody talks to people. All the time, and they're, they're no shit. They're like, my my boss is so stupid. My boss is this. My boss is that. I could do their job twenty times better. Blah blah blah. All that jazz. Right. But like, like, I mean, dude, I honestly think this is a real thing. I really hey, no, do. It, it 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 absolutely is, and it completely makes sense, right? You're yeah. because because you are promoted. The only thing that you can be promoted on. Well, this isn't this isn't true. Yeah. In a in a meritocracy. Normally, yeah. Right. You are promoted based on the, your past success, of Correct. course, right? Yeah. Not, not the, not the promise of what you might be able to do in the future. The yes. problem with using data points from past success to kind of determine what will happen in the future is that it's just never very accurate, right? Yeah. I mean, um, well, you're, you're extrapolating into, uh, unknown territory kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? That it's well, like, what? Well, right. And we suck. You know, look, we have in- insanely complicated models that try to do this in uh, in the stock market and they fail regularly. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. New information comes up and, you know, different uh, inputs result in uh, in, uh, you know, the same inputs, uh, seemingly same inputs result in different outputs. Like it's just it is what it is. But right. I think it's I think it's really interesting because um I've actually noticed I say I think it's really interesting because a lot. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, <laughs> try to flip that up a little bit. Right. Um, switch gears on that. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, when you think about it, having, uh, being promoted to your, you know, the, the level at which you are incompetent really, really makes sense that, because like incompetence, um, to me, does not necessarily mean incompetence is like something that is momentary. Right. Like like if I'm if somebody hands me uh, if somebody asks me to do it open can heart surgery, be momentary, it can be momentary. Yeah. yeah. And, and so and so um, so I, I was having this conversation with someone the other day, like mm-hmm. yesterday morning, I went on a really long run with one of my buddies in L.A. and we were chatting about this. So let me just make this this point on the on momentary incompetence. Yeah. If somebody 
puts me into a surgical theater and says, operate on this man's brain, I am by definition going to be an incompetent, like ignorant surgeon. I don't mm-hmm. know. I just don't. I don't know. There, there, are, and, you, and you, you. There are so many unknown quantities. You don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, um, so the pre, so, so, so. But I could learn. I yeah. could go to medical yeah. school and I could learn how to do these things. And I think most people uh, will put a little asterisk beside that and maybe qualify that later. <laughs> but the, the vast majority of people that you probably interact with on a day to day basis have the ability to learn complex tasks, right? There's a mm-hmm. very small percentage of the population that that can't even, for example, read instructions and follow instructions. Most people, you know, on a long enough timeline can look, can learn a skill. Um, but what's interesting is the Peter Principle seems to provide an, an argument against promoting somebody based on what they've done. Um, and instead, it seems to suggest, and this is, I'm coming up with this on the fly based on this conversation I had yesterday. I've got mm-hmm. a buddy who, who hires a lot of people at a large organization, right? And it seems to, it seems to suggest, uh, you know, a model where you don't necessarily want to reward people for things that they've done, but instead want to reward them for the way they do those things. Because mm-hmm. if they've, if they've been able to, achieve a a kind of methodology for for you know approaching a problem that's something that can be mapped at the most basic level right Mm -hmm. um other than imagine like you get hired by a company and then the biggest account the company's ever had just happens to fall into your lap and then you know you just happen to hire the right people and you just happened and there's like a series of events that ends up you know kind of skyrocketing your career and really you just fell on like four lottery tickets you know yeah. and so instead of looking at 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 actual actual you know the things that you have actually uh, accomplished which don't get me wrong those are important but to drill down a layer deeper and say how did you go about that right and so understanding the way that people approach problems and the way that people kind of uh, uh, accept their failures because we all don't win at everything all the time um, and how they kind of push forward seems to be a more accurate way, a more accurate kind of methodology for for promoting people. And that's what this guy was saying was that like, you know, think about, you know, looking at the way that that people, even kids, mm-hmm. like a approach problems like the creativity that they use and kind of teaching instead of like you know instead of you know uh simply because you sat here and memorized all these you know uh, answers on your calculus test you scored 100 therefore you got an a and you're really smart instead of teaching that showing that there's an immense amount of value in in kind of reaching your upper limit and then figuring out a way to research you know, like knowing where to how to critically think about problems to go and put a toolkit well, together to like achieve whatever is next. You know, so so to piggyback on your uh, math example, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like okay, you've got two two students, both of them come to the answer correctly, but one of them, you know, both of them showed their work. One of them didn't you you know didn't actually shouldn't have come to the correct answer. Kind of thing. Yeah. And so yeah. by showing your work, it's almost like being promoted on your tool set versus being uh, being promoted on your uh, successes or whatever. Right. Or right? even or even a, a layer below that. And mm-hmm. I and you I this is kind of near and dear to my heart right now because I am uh, I've been working in technology for years and I am now taking like a super deep dive um, uh, as a developer. Right. Yeah. Um, and so what's, what's really interesting is like, I'm the type, well, interesting from my perspective, I guess, is that, that I'm the type of person that has to study pretty hard. But once I study, well, when I come into something and if I don't understand, not understanding is the most valuable thing I have, right? Because then when I go through kind of writing out the logical process of how I'm thinking about a problem, mm-hmm. I can show that to someone and they can say, Okay, I see what you're the way you're thinking about this, but it's like 
there is this larger concept that you're missing or that you're you're operating inside of that affects this this you know this larger um in this in this case um you know chunk of code so my point is is that it's it's i dig this because um the meritocracy uh is real and matters but drilling into methodology i think is is super super important so let's wrap this up your boss is probably an idiot <laughs> nice. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. But no, uh, yeah. Honestly, uh, definitely uh, check it, check it out, man. The Peter Principle stuff is very, very, very interesting, and it's really it's it's worth looking into and looking at uh, any any of the articles or literature or any anything like that 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 covers that because it, yeah. it's a it, it'll be a, a somewhat deep dive, man, but it'll be um, it'll be worth your time for well, sure. Well, see, I so. thought you were sending me like a sexist article, right? Because I was fully expecting like the Peter Principle, and then like colon, <laughs> and like if you have one, you get paid more. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I thought it was a, I thought oh. it was, I thought it was a simple explanation of the pay gap. Dude, you know? super, oh. super quick aside. Um, I actually heard I mean, some. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I uh, I heard this this clip. That it was, um, <laughs> this news anchor, and he's like, uh, and blah, 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 talking about the pay, uh, the gender pay gap. And he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, so, um, basically, you know, we found that in our studies, uh, men normally receive more compensation. Now, one factor that, uh, that can definitely needs to be taken into consideration is they normally work longer hours. But anyway, so. <laughs> Oh my god! It was like one of these things, and it's like guy, this guy was not popular the next day. <laughs> it was so. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You but, know what? Uh, we should totally get into the like gender pay gap stuff yeah, on yeah, the show I'm, I'm because jotted in. it is a hard ass topic, man. It is really nuanced and really complicated. And I know there are people out there that are probably like rolling their eyes and they're like, no, it's not. But it's like when you, when you, you know, one of the things I really want to push for on Tether is to try to just kind of quantify as many things as we possibly can, right? Like mm-hmm. even if it's a hard ass subject and like really, really challenging to talk about, um, I still think that like trying to approach it in the most non-emotional way possible and i'm saying like from my side from your side from you know listener side or whatever and just like hear it out and then start like a series of like of of you know of arguments back and forth and kind Mm -hmm. of and rebuttals because i think that's like the the healthiest thing there okay switch gears dude so tell me about there was a big um a big uh settlement that happened a couple of weeks ago i think um, related to uh, 3D printed guns, and dude, there are layers. So, yeah. what is what? So, what are you thinking about? Yeah, man. So, um, so I dug this article up on um, CNN, and it, it was definitely on the uh, the top and center um, on on their radar. So, uh-huh. or I guess the uh-huh. center of their radar, not necessarily the top. But uh, so uh, the title was Americans can legally download 3D printed guns starting next month. Um, next month being August one. Right. Um, so there was a guy that had Cody, started. Cody Wilson, Defense Distributed. I'm actually. I'm. I'm. Spoiler alert. I'm a huge fan. But go ahead. Wait, are you joking or no? No, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about Cody Wilson. So. Yeah, so go through but, the article in the way that in the way that you read it, and I'll give you some details here that you'll yeah, dig. For that sure. That you'll dig. You'll dig for 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 um for uh, uh you know details sake. Yeah, for sure. So um so anyway, so the, this uh, he has the designs or he made the designs for a single shot pistol that's made almost entirely out of ABS plastic. Um, just to, uh, let you know about what ABS plastic is, it's basically the same plastic that they use to make Legos. Okay. Um, and so it's also, uh, one of the materials that you can use in 3D printers. So, um, 
you could literally print this gun, and then you would have to get uh, a firing pin and uh, some some other piece of metal that, uh, in order for it to comply with the Undetectable Firearms Act kind of okay. thing. Okay. So, which I'm, I'm actually I should have looked into that, didn't. So minor oversight, but just to figure out what the other piece was. But um, but anyway, so the U.S. State Department uh, contacted Wilson and told them to take down the plans because they thought that it violated uh, an international traffic and arms regulation. Okay. So basically the export of defense materials and uh, stuff along those lines across uh, um, country lines. And so it would be, you know, they, they thought they viewed it as potentially – um, being available for terrorist organizations or we'll just say undesirables to get their uh, hands on this these plans and print their own firearms kind of okay thing. so um, so they ended up getting into a um, I guess and we were we were talking about what, what it would be uh, called because it actually never went to trial but um, but yeah so they ended up settling. Because uh, I guess I, I I guess that it, it was they they figured out that um, that basically they would not be uh, it, it was it the the charges that were brought against him would not stand kind of thing they okay. it would be easily overturned kind of thing okay and so um, so they basically said okay well we're gonna um, we're gonna allow you to publish the plans. Um, and whatever, any, any kind of 3D drawings and all that stuff would be exempt from, um, export restrictions. Okay. And, uh, so I just thought that this was, this was very interesting because, um, I mean, it, I mean dude, that you, we are opening up, uh, a can of worms that, I mean, that it's going to be crazy where we go from here kind of thing. And and I, yeah. you know you know for a fact there's already like legislation and stuff in the works addressing this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. I so I'm let me let me tell you a little bit about uh, a little bit about uh, Cody Wilson and how I came to know this and was and sure. was, was in, and became into it. Um, so Cody Wilson, um, I, I was just trying to Google this uh, as you were chatting because I wanted to make sure that I got it right. But I yeah. think I think this guy is actually um, graduated from law school in okay. Texas, right? Oh, okay. And he's a young cat, right? Um, yeah. He is. Uh, he was born in '88, so he's 30 this year, yeah. right? Okay. Um, but the central idea. So he started Defense Distributed in 2012. And the central idea here is that, um, you know, uh, based on the Second Amendment, that we should be able to, um, you know, send these files around and have the ability to defend yourself. This is – these are kind of – I'm tr- – I'm – uh, summarizing here mm-hmm. briefly, right? But the ab- ability to kind of create weapons that, that – equalize the power playing field right mm-hmm. uh, that that should be a right that people have so if i am a woman who's you know five feet two inches tall um you know physically a man who is six two is probably more powerful than me and this, so the, the, it's all about kind of power dynamics and power mm-hmm. dynamics and how they kind of boil up to the state level right mm-hmm. so by the way he's a former student of the university of texas school of law i don't think he graduated gotcha uh, but i think i think that uh that uh yeah I don't think he he got his law degree, um, and even if he did, I don't, I don't think he he passed the bar or whatever. So um, so yeah, he created this thing called the Liberator. The Liberator was a pistol, um, and that was like 2013 or 14. Huge huge deal when that first came out. It was like on the cover of Wired and whatever. Mm-hmm. At the same time, there was like all this weird shit that was happening with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. This all kind of got whipped up into this really interesting frenzy of like. 
you know, guns, real guns being sold and, you know, gun, gun files, CAD files being sold and whatever. 3D yeah. pr- printing is kind of coming online. 3D, you know, machines that can, that can mill at home, mm-hmm. um, are, were starting to come online. And then in 2000, I think it was like maybe 15 or 16, mm-hmm. 14, 15 or 16, um, they came out with another product called the Ghost Gunner. Mm-hmm. And the Ghost Gunner, um, produced from, uh, from, um, uh, in this, in this kind of portable milling machine that they would sell you. Mm-hmm. What's no, what's known as a receiver for AR 15s, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you look at an AR 15, the, the center of the gun, where the handle snaps in, where the butt snaps in, and where, where the, the magazine That's is exactly in. right. Yeah. That, is, that is called the receiver, and that is the, without a doubt, the business end of the gun, right? Yeah. You yeah. have to have that for this thing to be a gun. Yeah. Um, and so with the way that they were getting around this is they were saying, well, look, yeah, sure, that's true, but this is not a full gun, right? And there is a huge loophole in mm-hmm. – I, I don't even – Necess- well, I guess it would be technically a loophole, but there's a huge loophole where you can sell gun components um, and that you do not have the same restrictions as selling like a fully made. Uh, yeah, fully ready. manufactured and like right. assembled exactly gun right. kind of thing. That's exactly right. And so the nature of this is uh, – the nature of this conversation is that these guns are by definition ghost guns. They do yeah. not have serial numbers. They are untraceable. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. Which is, I, I mean, that's both, uh, it's really funny. Literally, <laughs> you said that and it kind of gave me chills because it's like, that's it. In my opinion, I don't think that's necessarily that bad of a thing with the exception of obviously there are two sides to everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so man. it's like, I mean, it, if it's I'll... untraceable, then it's like, it, you know, it gets in the wrong hands. How do you, how do you deal with it? How do you, you know, a lot of like forensics and stuff. They can Absolutely. use, you know, different uh, clues or whatever it would be and be able to trace it back to a specific serial number or at least a specific type of gun or something. And so, I mean, it, this is one of those scenarios that it's like, and which I mean, I you know that the government is just straight up like, you know, because... I mean, it's one of those things that, like, dude, if you don't know that it exists, how do you take it away from someone? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Abs- you, you know, Abs- it's Ab- absolutely, absolutely, man, one hundred percent. But I'm, I am telling you, mm-hmm. the most interesting aspect of this entire situation that's going on is like. I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think that I'm maybe a, a little crazy for thinking about this, but when I talk to people that I really, really appreciate and respect, even if politically we're kind of, you know, opposed to each other, mm-hmm. there is this really interesting, and I guess for lack of a better term, I guess, I guess zeitgeist is probably the best term. Just this like, this like generally, you know, this general kind of feeling that seems to be floating around you know, people in our demographic where it's like, you know, we want systems that are flatter and more accessible and, and that, 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 you know, people are willing to pay for experiences that are our age and we don't want, you know, as much stuff or whatever. I mean, these are huge generalizations, but the point Mm -hmm. is, is that it seems as though, you know, with cryptocurrency on the rise and, you know, people being able to travel really easily. And it's just, it's just this idea of, of of personal freedom. I mean, hell, even the article about babies to a certain extent, right? Being able to do what you want to do, right? And raise your family the way that you want to raise your family and live in the way that you want to live. That just seems like it's something that's being addressed regularly now and mi- from many different angles. And so my point in saying this is that um in a in a if you look at like like, you know, whatever, nature, right? Like like the natural order of of you know the world is not does not contain governments right yeah yeah and so to think about you're right in the United States it is a crazy concept that somebody could print this thing up and go into a local coffee shop hose me down right I'm dead. Mm-hmm. And now you're, they're looking for this gun that was never on the radar or whatever. And I could see how 
my family and my wife could be, uh, you know, beside themselves with a scenario yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. I, and I fully admit it. Um, and I don't know how I would feel, obviously, being on the on the receiving end of some absolutely tragic news like that. But mm-hmm. man, I can't help but feel that in terms of just like like the you know the government probably doesn't have the best the ultimately net net the best interest for you i don't know that they're that that's the best interest in mind for you i don't know that they can you've got 300 yeah. you've got 325.7 million people in the united states there's no way everyone it, you know that they, this government is operating in the best interest of everyone they operate in the best interest of you know either the masses or the people with the largest pocketbooks which is probably most realistic right now so my point yeah. is that if you believe that like you know there is some some layer of like you know protecting kind of yourself against you know this this kind of larger entity man it is it's just infinitely fascinating you can 3d print deadly weapons and the federal government settled with this guy yeah like that is it's hard to even wrap your mind around what that means well and and that's that's the other thing is that it's like okay every everybody thought that that this would go to trial or, yeah. or at least the the vast yeah. majority of people that were keeping up with this and, and as yeah. far as it I've read about it everybody thought that it would go to trial and then all of a sudden it gets settled it's like all right that's when the antennas go up and, and you know you're like uh what's going on here so now now why yeah. did we do this you know yeah yeah but i mean it's it's if you've never read any um or heard any of Cody Wilson's uh interviews the guy's an interesting guy he's like he definitely kind of has an, an an ego about him. Um, I you know I get it. Like he's working in a pretty pretty interesting uh, place. But I mean, again, I think that you know a knee jerk reaction of saying like this is like you know bad across the board. Um, I don't think I'm there. I'm actually I kind of tend to lean more on the this idealistic you know concept of like personal freedom above all. Um, that being said. You know, if if uh, you know, and I'm sure we'll get into this. You know, we have a, a number of these podcasts that we're going to do. But um, I, I I think it's if you want to go 3D print a, gr- a gun and go and like and and because you know for whatever reason you can't afford one or something and you want to use it to protect your family. Okay, you know, if you want to 3D print a gun to go and and live off the grid and hunt deer and you just don't want to be in somebody's database. Okay. I agree with that. You want to 3d print a gun, you know, to, you know, perpetuate some fucking mass murder in a mall. Like, obviously I'm, I'm against that, you know, but it's like, how do you, how do you protect it, man? I'm just telling you that all of this technology we are coming, we're entering this age where the confluence of all this technology is happening so fast. Mm -hmm. Our legal system, this is a total aside, but it's simply ill-equipped to handle the, the pace of innovation. Yeah, I mean, no, no, well, I mean, that's 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 what we data. that's what we we keep seeing over and over and over is that technology has hit this exponential uh, rate of development to where legislation can't keep up with it. I mean, it, it, it's not even it's not even in the ballpark. Yeah, like yeah. it's not even close. I mean, Bitcoin. You know, the white paper came out in 2008, nine, 2000, uh, December of 2008. Um, mm-hmm. People started building this network or part- I should say participating in this network in earnest in 2009, 10. Um, we are, you know, uh, almost, well, 10 years, 10, a decade mm-hmm. away from this when this stuff got published. People made billions and billions of dollars before mm-hmm. the government really started taking an in-depth look at this. Yeah. So it's yeah. just and I I that's not it's not bad or good or anything or or anywhere in between. Simply like anecdotally that's that is the point. And so it's like, you know, Cody Wilson flying the flag for the libertarians in the United States, all about that. Awesome. Yeah. You know, some some insane ISIS person downloading the shit and perpetuating you know, uh, horrible tragedies. This is not what happened, by the way, but I'm just using this mm-hmm. as an example. Shooting up the, uh, you know, the 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 uh, 
Baklavan or, or uh, whatever, whatever it was, bat- Bataclavin mm. or whatever in mm. uh, in France, like obviously a bad thing. So yeah. anyway, man, thank you for putting this article up because I think it's just incredibly interesting. And what you know, we'll um, we've got Black Ops advertising that's going to go up on the show notes, and we'll yeah. post post a couple of links about Cody Wilson and some interviews as well. Um, yeah. His his philosophy is very interesting, and would definitely suggest kind of poking around on uh, on some of the books that. Uh, that he reads. There's a guy, uh, Michel uh, Foucault, who's uh, this uh, French philosopher that's written a couple mm-hmm. of interesting books. We'll post some links to that. But um, gotcha. but anyway, man, I'm look I'm looking at the time. Let's uh, let's let's go at a dead sprint into this last uh, in this last point, and then we will put a bow on it, my friend. So what do we got? All right. All right. So last thing. Um, so I just randomly saw this thing uh, because, like I said, I'm, you know, one of my guilty pleasures is uh, looking at BuzzFeed because even though it's probably, <laughs> well, it's it's one of the most opinionated, uh, fun thing that I, you know, I've, I you can read on the internet, but it's entertaining if nothing else. And I thought this was actually kind of interesting. But um, it was called People Are Speaking Up Against This So-Called Trend of Donating Vacation Days to New Moms. Uh-huh. And so I was like, man, that's, you know, that's kind of weird. They're, I, they're speaking up against it? Well, they're speaking up uh, against against it in the sense that they don't feel that uh, – that should have to happen. They think that the businesses need to give appropriate maternal leave kind of thing. Got it. Got it. But, um, and this is, this is a perfect example, uh, in my opinion, of what we were talking about earlier, that it's like, you know what? If you, if you see something, look into it. Don't take it for face value kind of okay. thing. Okay. Um, because when you actually look into the story, of course, it drummed up all this stuff on social media and, you know, just to, quote a couple like tweets and stuff um what if stay with me on this guys what if we instead just stop being literally the only first world nation on earth that doesn't guarantee paid maternity leave that was one person another person said um this story should be titled how americans cope with our inhumane economy uh i mean and it was just that you know basically a barrage of people um criticizing corporate America and uh, just the, you know, businesses uh, that, that it's ridiculous that they don't have the appropriate leave and stuff. But if you actually look into the thing that, w- that was posted, um, it was originally uh, came up on Good Morning America, which take it or leave it. But uh, <laughs> right, right. But right. anyway, so G- the, the, GMA. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so the actual yeah. uh, thing behind it is. This lady was less than a year into her job um, when her daughter was born. Okay. Okay. So, so she didn't actually qualify. They have it. She just didn't qualify for paid maternity leave yet because she was new at her job. Got it. Now, I I understand that, and and so I'm going to I'm going to uh, literally sit on the fence, and I'm going to explain what I think is uh, kind of what's going on, but. It's one of these things that, you know, whatever, uh, omission of details, I can't stand that, but that's that's kind of what we're dealing with here because, okay, if you, if all these businesses were responsible uh, for giving paid maternity leave the, you know, the day you start a job kind of thing, what is going to stop people from literally trying to be employed just to get paid maternity leave and then quit their job? Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? And just game the system kind of thing. Right. And so, right. I, I mean, like, honestly, I go back and forth. I just, you know, I've got a, a, a nine-month-old at this point. It was very, very nice, uh, uh, Megan having paid maternity leave. And because um, she's been in her job for, uh, you know, like seven years at this point kind of thing. And she deserves every, honestly, in my opinion, she deserved more, but obviously I'm biased, but, uh, right. but it's, it's one of these things that, man, I, you know, you have to walk this fine line of like, okay, well, you know, how long do they need to be here before they, uh, um, before they, uh, help me out. What's the, what's the word? Uh, before they have certain perks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, before they, uh, I, I, whatever, before they qualify, sorry. For okay. Um, okay. different uh, like perks and leave and paid leave and all that jazz. Because okay. I mean, dude, paid leave 
is obviously a huge thing for companies. I mean, it's dude, it is. It really, 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 really is. And I mean, it, it, do you think? So there was part of uh, what you were. I was just uh, fact checking a couple of things just real quickly sure. when you were saying that. So I may have missed this, but did you? Do they provide an option for unpaid leave? Uh, and that's a that's a good question, man. I actually I did not see anything on there, and I'm pretty sure it's not um, it's not covered. But I also I, think that it's not covered for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's um, so I think what would be interesting to look into. Um, I don't think people understand just how disruptive it is when people are are out of the office like it's it's when you go to a job you're just in your own kind of little section of this mm-hmm. of this company and it's it's it, it like the, the 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 entire reason a business is set up is to make money period yeah. period yeah. period or to or to advance a certain a certain um you know key goal or whatever yeah. right yeah and so it's like I, I, this is a really tough one because I, you know, I don't have children. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but, um, so I get it. Like, I understand. And I, and honestly, I think people should be able to donate. If they want to donate their vacation time to somebody else, great. Do it. Whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I think expecting, um, a company or an organization to really just be like, sure, whatever, take as much time as you want. I yeah. mean, I, the way I see it is like, dude, I mean, if they've got, how can they possibly protect your job? If you, if you are important at your job, they need you there by yeah. definition. Yeah. And in order for you, for your pay is directly related to the, the level of effect that you have on a company. Mm-hmm. Right. And so if they're like, man, we don't care, whatever, show up whenever or, or have as much paid, you know, well, first of all, they're not going to give you as much paid leave as possible because that would literally be, you know, uh, yeah. you've I'll, not shown. I'll come back in a couple of years. Yeah. And you've not, well, and you've not shown that you're, <laughs> that you're even interested in coming back. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, and so this is, this is a hard topic, but, um, well, I, and, and that's, that's another, uh, real quick, uh, side point but like you said you're not interested in or you you don't even know whether or not you're interested in coming back a lot of uh women will take maternity leave with the complete and utter intentions of returning to work and then decide on their leave hey i think i want to stay home with the kid kind right of thing. that's exactly and right so yeah so i mean i don't know it's it's a very i agree with you i think that that should be an option if uh you know if if and honestly, not even for m- maternity kind of stuff. If you want to give your vacation days to someone else, fucking do it, man. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, absolutely. whatever. No absolutely. skin off our backs, you know. A- absolutely. But, but absolutely. you know, it's it's also uh, it's it's also one of those things, man. That it's like, well, you know, if you get the if you get the whole story about it, then it's it kind of it it's not as cut and dry as they present it. Let me put it that way. Yeah, abs- absolutely. I-, I think the other thing is we don't factor for this now and we could. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if we, if we looked and we said, um, you know, net, net, what's the effect of having an employee that is at this level, you know, um, um, that has been here for this long, um, request time off like this, what's the effect? Yeah. And if you and if you see that they typically don't come back, okay, factor that in. If you see that you know there's certain characteristics that pull people back in, and they want to, you know, you know, I know that uh, your wife is is very, um, uh, I don't want to say, I don't want to misfra- uh, misstate this, but very professionally uh, motivated. You know what I mean? Yes. Like mm-hmm. she's she's definitely. Um, She's what I would, would be known as a go-getter. <laughs> well, I would definitely call her a career woman too. Yeah, you know, yeah, I would absolutely yeah. put put her in that in that and that, and it's like you know, and she is uh, amazing with your kid and like you know what I mean. But she does, she definitely, you guys have achieved a really good balance, right? Yeah. Uh, well, and, and that's that's kind of one of the things that it's like you know, obviously every every family's different kind of thing. Yep. But but it's like. 
I mean, dude, bringing a kid into this world, you need to plan. So it's, it's true, it's like, but a lot, a lot of people don't have that. Uh, I mean, there's a definitely a deeper topic for another day, but a lot of people just don't have that that you know uh, that uh, like financial foresight almost well, that foresight or that financial ability. I mean, if you yeah, if, you're, if you're you know 23 and you get hitched and you have not had the the time for whatever reason. You know, um, you didn't start, you, you didn't start your career early enough or you just finished college or whatever. And you've only got a couple, three years in, in the workforce at a certain, um, you know, a certain, uh, level or whatever. And mm. you, and you get pregnant and like finances are tight. And it's like, I get it. Right. But it's yeah. like, I think that, um, I think that companies could definitely put a little bit more time into kind of thinking about, kind of quantifying like I guess my thing would be like all maternity leave is not the same like there are some mm-hmm. employees that are going to go and are going and are going to say like this is like a biological function I'm going to have this kid my husband for like in your situation has rejiggered his entire life to make sure that we have handled at home what we need to ha- have handled at home but it's mm-hmm. like drawing that line between you know there are your problems and then there are the company's problems right yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that's really in my opinion, kind of the long and the short of it yeah. is that it's like, it's, it's, you you work for a business when all is said and done, it is a business, not a charity. Yeah. So, yeah. and I, I know that sounds terrible and even, you know, even having a child, it's just a, I, I think that, uh, and uh, this is a way bigger topic, but I think that more, um, more, What's the word? Jeez, I'm like falling short. And uh, more companies, more, no, more. No, no, it's just uh, people. People need to uh, take. Um, oh my God, not authority. Jeez, uh, you're, they, no, no, they responsibility. need to they own they need their. To, yeah, they, they need to take responsibility, and they need to I'd be just accountable. Be accountable. Thank yeah. you. Jeez, I was struggling. That's yep, yep. The, that that means that we're nearing the end of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's true. It's it's but, true, but uh, I, I I think that a lot of companies don't they don't quantify this stuff, man. They just true. absolutely don't. That it's just like it's it's it is. Um, uh, I would be really interested to look at the companies in Europe, for example, that have very well known liberal, um, um, you know, maternity and pater- and paternity policies, yeah. and see how they factor for that. Because you yeah. know they do it. I mean, you oh, know, yeah. these people these people are. Uh, the people that are typically are well, maybe the Peter Principle would say different, but the people that are, that are probably <laughs> running some of these, uh, some of these, uh, you know, uh, yeah. departments are probably pretty sharp and should thinking about it. But yeah. anyway, man. Um, okay, cool. Well, I think that we are kind of at the at the top of the hour. We've gone a little bit past, but this has been an awesome <laughs> episode. You know, yeah, dude. So. Yeah, no, good, really good topics, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is. This that, that's it that's it so this is this is a reminder that you have been listening to tether radio i am joseph and i'm daniel and we thank you for joining us uh get back next week for episode number eight we've got the docket already filling up and uh we are here to remind you to stay tethered friends take it easy later guys <laughs> <laughs>